dealing with a 2005 Nissan Pathfinder. This thing is a 4.0 liter V6. It runs really bad. I am um, just driving it around the building. My first instinct is this. It either has a jump chime chain or it has some clogged exhaust. I'm going to plug scan tool up, get some codes, look at some data, and get some direction on which way to go with this thing. DTCs, P0300. I didn't put a screenshot up. We've all seen it. Um, not really a, a big help. The engine runs really rough off idle. So my strategy is this. I either need to prove it has a clogged converter. I need to prove or prove it has some timing issues or prove it has neither and go a different route. So I'm going after timing or clock converter unless the data points me in a different direction. So here's my first scan. I'm looking at intake timing on both banks. This is idle. It's running about 625 RPMs. So as we could see through this section right here at idle, both banks are reading zero or zero and one. That's a good sign. Uh, that tells me that my intake cams are in line. This engine has, it's a dual red cam. Uh, it has exhaust cams. They are not monitored by sensors. Um, so it is possible, and I have seen exhaust cams jump, and you can't see that with scan data. Um, you have to look for different clues and do more testing to figure that out, which we're going to get into. The other big, big red flag for me as far as timing or converter issue is this. Right in here, I'm up off idle. You can see my cams start advancing. They're pretty close. But you can see here my uh, front air fuel ratio sensors are what I call lopsided. One's high, one's low. One's reading extremely rich, one's reading uh, extremely lean. They work opposite of oxygen sensors. So if the number is big, it's lean. If the number is smaller, it's rich. And as I scroll through, you can see the discrepancy, 1.2 versus 1.7. On this engine, 1.5 would be perfect. So I keep looking, looking, looking. So I'm up over two here, which this, is really wanting fuel and this guy's saying hey I've got too much take 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 my cam timing is still spot on on the intake I do not have enough evidence right now to convict meaning I cannot honestly go to my customer and say you've got this problem you either have a converter issue or you have a chain issue what I do know is one bank is heavily affected more than the other I just need to figure out which bank is correct and which bank has the problem. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to tear the time and chain cover off this thing and look. The other thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to pull an oxygen sensor out and stick a back pressure gauge in. Uh, this is an 05. We're in year 2022. The amount of rust on this exhaust um, means that I'm not going to pull flanges off and look at converters. It's just not happening unless I have 100% solid evidence that that's the direction I need to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, Pico scope out. Of course, we're going to have Pico captures and my WPS transducer, and I'm going in the cylinder, and I'm going to pick on bank two simply because it's easier to get to. Uh, I'm going to do bank one, two. We'll have captures from both, but I'm going to start on bank two, and we're going to try to figure out why these trims are so lopsided my intake cams, I'm confident, are in time. We do need to look at our exhaust cams. And we're going to use the data, and we're going to make a good decision, a good diagnostic decision. And um, we're going to make sure we're selling our customer the right repair without tearing a bunch of stuff apart. So hang on while I get the captures up. All right, so this is bank two. I put a WPS in the cylinder. Um, this is the bank that, remember, was wanting more fuel. 
it, it was running lean. This bank wants more fuel. This is a, the positive 125 on the fuel trim. So what I'm looking for in here, and um, let's just take a bite right in here. Let's see, let's zoom on in. These are fairly even. The engine's running kind of rough, so I've tried to pick the more even cylinders to kind of look at. So any WPS chip capture I look at, um, I like to look at peak compression. So peak compression is between 135 and 133. All right, right off the bat, that is way too much compression for an idling engine, for this particular idling engine. So I don't like that. So I'm going to look on down here at vacuum. Um, intake vacuum is negative 7.5 PSI, which would equate to about 15 inches of mercury. In my area, that is not enough. So right now I have two things working against this capture. One, too much compression. Two, I don't like the vacuum. So we were talking about in the, um, in the scan data portion that it is possible that my exhaust cam could be out. So what I've done is I've got my ruler set at 0 and 120, uh, 720, and then I've got each stroke. Well, I live by the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb says this exhaust ramp is in time. I like to see this ramp, this 180 be where it's at, or cut it right in the middle. So between that, and the exhaust valve opening, which is somewhere roughly, I mean, you can really get in here and split hairs, but uh, somewhere in here, it's 153, between 130 and 160 is a good time for that valve to open. I don't have the cam card in front of me, but I can tell you, this raises no red flags to me. The exhaust cam, I believe, is is fine on this bank. This was the lean bank. Now one thing I do not like is right here. This is all the intake side. Two things I don't like. One, I do not like all these ripples here. I usually don't see that. That's a lot. There's, there's something moving around in here. There's some disturbance in the air. The intake valve probably opens somewhere in here at 360. And I like to see the middle of this ramp drop around 380, and it's showing me 393. Uh, my scan data says that my intake cam is in time. My WPS, it never lies to me. It's just how do I interpret what I'm seeing? Well, what I'm seeing is I don't like where the intake ramp is falling. I'm not blaming it on timing yet but I don't like it. So I'm going to store that in the back of my head. I do not like these ripples. And the other thing I'm looking at is that intake valve is closing and this pressure is starting to build right in here. 608, I could probably tweak it a little. Uh, I can tell you I've looked at it a million times around 600 to 610 is normal intake valve closing so I like that but I don't like this and I can tell you there's no way a chain went late and then got in time and then went late and then got in time so this concerns me but it's not fitting in the puzzle right now um, exhaust back pressure that would be measured right in here. This is your exhaust plateau. And you can see, let me just type in zero. I just like to snap it right to zero. I have no back pressure in the exhaust on B2. Usually when I see cam timing issues, I see it right at the end. Usually I'll have a little nose up. Uh, I don't see that. So what do I know? I have very little vacuum or I have low vacuum, but I have high compression. Well, vacuum and compression are, are proportional to each other. Um, I would expect to see that. 
So I'm getting plenty, plenty, plenty of volume in this cylinder to make all this compression. This compression should be about 70 at idle. It's at 130 plus. But yet, my scan data is screaming, I need more fuel. So what is this thing compressing? It's not all air going in this cylinder. This cylinder is getting a little bit of an EGR effect. It is, it's compressing burnt gas along with oxygen, if that makes any sense. It may make sense better once I show the next capture. Because in order to get this much compression, this cylinder has to have a nice full cylinder full of something to compress. High volume, low pressure means that something's getting pushed into this cylinder. And I can tell you this engine's naturally aspirated. It's not supposed to be. And this rippling here is kind of a giveaway. So what I know my exhaust timing is in time on this bank. My converter is not closed on or not clogged on this bank. I have some other issues that I'm trying to piece together. They're all pieces to the puzzle. Um, so I'm laying them to the side, but I'm going to stick with what I do know. My exhaust timing's good and my converter is not clogged. My cam intake cam timing is closing fine, but appears to be opening late, uh, which is kind of a hard pill to swallow. And I've got a lot of rippling in my intake pull. So I'm gonna take that information, and now I'm gonna move the WPS to the other side, so, and we're gonna look at that. Now we're in bank one. This was the side that was taking away fuel. This was the rich side of the engine. So, um, Engine's idling. We'll take a little bite right in here, trying to pick an even spot. You can see the idle is kind of going up and down. These don't look too bad. So uh, we're going to run right in here. Let me see. Let me back that out just a little bit. There we go. So first off, just like before, I'm going to drop the thing down, and we're going to look at peak compression. What do I got going on here? Let me get that off there. Uh, peak compression is... We're looking about 88 or 89, which is less than the other bank, but in my opinion, just still a little high for this engine. So that means it, like the other, in, the other bank, is getting plenty of stuff to compress. Uh, we'll look at vacuum. 8.97. Just for ease of math, why don't we just call it an even nine, which will put it at 18 inches of mercury, which is better, but still not great for my area. My area is about 20, 21, but uh, definitely a big difference between the other bank. The other bank was about 14, and the compression was 130. This is about 18, and the compression's about 90. So you can see that the the relationship between pressure and compression. Um, one's high, the other one's lower, one's low, the other one's higher. So something to always remember, it never changes. Um, we were concerned about our exhaust cam timing. So I was glad to see this. There's our 180 mark, which I love seeing it there, or cut it about halfway. So that's kind of telling me that our exhaust cam is in good shape, just like the other bank. Um, our exhaust valve is open at about 140, which is perfect for my rule of thumb. I know we were concerned about the intake side, uh, how it was really late on the other side. So let's take a peek at this bank. There's our 360. I like to see the middle around 380, 384, pretty good. And then we're closing somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, I don't know, 600. You can split a few hairs. So the cam timing looks perfect on this bank. The other bank, the only issue I had was the intake opening. Here is what I believe was causing the whole issue. Oh, and notice the rippling. Remember the other bank had 
I actually counted them. It was seven ripples. Uh, this one has about three. But here's the kicker, guys. Let's pull this guy down. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this. Let's snap this to zero, just like we did before. There's zero. So what the hell is this? You put this anywhere in here. That is 10 PSI of exhaust back pressure. This is not a diesel engine. This is a gasoline engine. This is way too high. Uh, this engine's idling. That is 10 pounds of pressure on the exhaust. This is our problem. This engine can't breathe. The only reason it's building compression is it is slurping EGR or the EGR effect. This pressure is getting pushed back into the intake. That's why our other bank looks so late. The cylinder had, the piston had to actually start coming down before it pulled vacuum because there was so much of this shit getting pushed back into the intake. So at this point, I know 100% I need to tear the exhaust off this car. I'm not going to do it for fun or practice. I'm going to get paid to do it because the evidence has shown me that's what needs to be done. The WPS or a PV350 um, is the real deal. You combine that with a Pico and some scam data guys, and man, you could really nail down these diagnostics. Uh, at this point, the only thing I had taken loose were two spark plugs and two coils. Um, the customer declined the repair because of the age of the vehicle and the cost of the converter. Um, I assumed the converter was clogged because Nissans in general, we see a lot of this. Uh, if we have coil failures, our ECUs do not shut off injectors. So if we have no spark and raw fuel, uh, the converters get melted down. Um, we, I see this scenario a lot. Uh, this, I could show you 10 different examples of this exact same thing playing out with scan data. But I still do not take for granted that every time I see lopsided fuel trims that it is converters because I have seen change jump. So I have to go through the motions to prove converter or chain. So, and the way I see it is this. The bank that's lean, which was on, the, on this uh, particular case was bank two, the bank that's screaming for more fuel, that means it's getting air through that cylinder. That means that's the side that's flowing. This was the rich side. If I can't get air out, I can't get air in. So this was the rich side. So as a general rule of thumb, the side screaming for more fuel is the side that's flowing. Um, take that for what it's worth. It doesn't always work, but for the most part, it'll guide you down the road. You keep testing until that theory is no longer relevant, and then you test something else to make sure you're getting on the right path. That was kind of the point of this whole video. This is kind of a simple diag. It's more about the strategy and figuring out what these numbers and this cool stuff these cool tools is telling me so i can sell the right repair hope you guys enjoyed this video if you like this style of video let me know because um, i can keep doing case studies little individual case studies that give you a little insight of how i think about the way i go about diagnosing cars but thanks again for watching this long i appreciate it uh like subscribe share you know the deal and uh, by all means have a good one